I'm Peter Neal, director of the World Ocean Observatory. Natural disasters happen. A few days in the news until the headlines are diverted by some political event or even another disaster. But the after effects endure long after. And so we here at World Ocean Radio must not be distracted from our focus on the lessons of Superstorm Sandy and her $50 billion impact on the metropolitan New York region, one of the most densely settled urban and suburban areas in the world. What is done next in New York will be instructive for everyone everywhere living within critical, predictable coastal areas threatened by sea level rise and extreme weather. The New York Metropolitan Waterfront Alliance was founded in 1998 as a project of the New York Municipal Arts Society and became an independent civic organization in 2007. It is today the voice of over 620 organizations with ties to our regional waterways, coastal environment, and $9 billion maritime industry. The Alliance works to transform the waters of New York and New Jersey Harbor into clean and accessible places to learn, work, and play with inviting parks, dependable jobs, and reliable, eco-friendly transportation for all. Quote, Sandy's wrath was tragic, but foreseen, unquote, states the Alliance website. Indeed, that foresight has driven the organization for more than a decade, during which they have developed a structure of values and specific strategies that are, in my view, exemplary and a model for consideration by others worldwide facing similar challenge. Here, condensed and paraphrased, are their five premises for a sustainable 21st century metropolitan waterfront. 1. A working waterfront to sustain an important local, regional, and national resource where water-dependent industry, shipping, and maritime jobs are supported and expanded as a critical component of the world economy. 2. Blue Highways to develop a viable maritime alternative for transportation of goods and people within the city and coastwise to relieve an overtaxed highway and transit system, air and water pollution, and the vulnerable shoreline for the most essential industry and recreation. 3. A green harbor. To restore the harbor and associated bays, rivers, creeks, and canals to the cleanest they have been in centuries, to apply the best technology to collect, protect, treat, and recycle groundwater from all sources, and to achieve a healthy marine environment. 4. A waterfront town. To expand and construct new waterfront parks, esplanades, beaches, fishing piers, boathouses, and docks, to extend these attractions into all neighborhoods, to create new and exciting waterside destinations, and to enable a waterfront style of living for all. 5. A well-designed edge to transform design criteria, zoning, codes, and permitting for the shoreline to assure protection, maritime use, public access, safety, employment, and recreation. Post-Sandy, the Alliance has proposed a more specific 10-point platform for action for consideration by the public, planners, decision-makers, and politicians for a specific, responsible, inventive response to rebuilding for the future. Here is the action list now under discussion. 1. SEAL Infrastructure Waterfront cities should commit to hardening and sealing vital infrastructure such as subways, telecommunications, energy, and electricity infrastructure to protect against flooding. 2. Research on sea gates. Assess and research the environmental, logistical, and equity issues, along with economic costs and benefits, that large-scale sea gates and barriers would bring to the region. 3. Update flood maps. Update flood maps for New York City and New Jersey to more accurately reflect current land use conditions, incorporate sea level rise projections, and integrate the real-time reality of Sandy's damage. 4. Zoning and building codes. Review zoning, building and codes, and standards to prevent loss of life and property in the event of storm surges. 5. Office of Sea Level Rise and Climate Change. Local and regional governmental offices should be established and well-resourced to prevent and plan for sea level rise and climate change. New York City must commit to maintaining and resourcing the current Mayor's Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability for the long term and establishing senior staff in every department responsible for coordinating and implementing solutions. 6. Commit to the Comprehensive Restoration Plan. New York City, New York State, New Jersey, and the federal government must commit to the restoration of the harbor based on the Comprehensive Restoration Plan and funded through the Harbor Act to establish oyster reefs, wetlands, and other flood and wave attenuating natural features to soften the edge and help to mitigate the effect of storm surges, sea level rise, and extreme weather. 7. Neighborhood Climate Change Strategies 
adopt neighborhood-based climate change planning strategies based on outreach to community boards, local councils, civic organizations, and grassroots organizations to help communities plan for emergencies and to build support for infrastructure changes. Eight, retreat and conversion strategies. Consider retreat from land that is of high risk for storm surge and extreme flooding with equitable compensation for those displaced. Consider conversion of flood-prone and surge-vulnerable areas to parkland. Nine, hazardous materials regulations. Commit to implementing comprehensive plans and establishing regulations that require securing hazardous wastes and contaminated areas to prevent the release of toxics and hazardous waste materials during flooding. 10. Value costs avoided. Government budget offices such as the New York City Office of Management and Budget, the New York State Division of the Budget, and others should be required to weigh the extra costs of making resilient our vital infrastructures versus the cost required to replace that infrastructure in the event of storm surge, extreme weather, and other coastal hazards. These are all items worthy of discussion, but we have talked about them for years now, and it is time to honor Sandy by implementing them as far and wide as possible. We will discuss these issues and more in future editions of World Ocean Radio.